but it's zero to five, and then it's um, suspended. Uh, and then it goes to zero to five active at the second offense. So um, uh, I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Representative Pruitt. Did you have a comment on that? You know, the, on, the one thing I would say is I think sometimes we look at the, these numbers as hard numbers that are guarantees. Um, you know, if, if, you, if, if you read this as you're going to be in jail for five days, you've inappropriately read this, but you're also going to inappropriately read every single statute that we have. In this particular case, what it's saying is that a, a judge has that right to say up to five days of active imprisonment. And if, and if you're in a court situation, if I'm on the other side, I'm the prosecutor, and I'm, I'm arguing that this is a scenario where this person, uh, and I'm asking six people on the other side there to uh, put this person in jail for a period of time or to consider that, there's no way that I can argue this particular case without bringing up the situation that is the previous drug offense. I'm going to have to now explain to the six people on the other side how that drug offense relates to this theft. It's going to be part of the it's going to be part of the convincing of those six people that are their peers, and they will have to decide unanimously that I'm that I what I have argued is something that they can agree with. So I think if we continue to say, well, it's five days, they're going to be in jail for five days. I, I think you haven't understood really the concept for which I've laid out here. The goal is that we have that tool up to the point of five days of active. They don't have to give them five days of active. They could give them what the pre, what the, they could, in, in, in essence, the judge could determine five days suspended. The judge could determine something else there. So I, I think that, um, I, I, I th and I think that that's an important piece to remember as we continue our discussion, not just on this amendment, but throughout the judicial reform. These numbers aren't hard. These numbers are tools up to. This is the maximum, not the guarantee. OK, any other comments on this issue before I move to the next comments? Did you, on this issue, Representative Gurr? Oh, I just are, were we going to wait to see if Representative Pruitt's amendment imposed jail time for somebody who had prior used marijuana? Um, I think we don't know the answer to that yet. Do, do you want to ask? I don't think in jail would be I mean, I, I think it does. But yeah. yeah. It's good. Skidmore. Skidmore. Uh, sure. Uh, Mr. Skidmore. So the chair, Mr. Skidmore, um, prior to the legalization of marijuana in the state, uh, it used to be a crime if you used and possessed a certain amount of marijuana, a certain level, if you possessed a certain level. Um, it was a crime, and so would Representative Pruitt's amendment apply to somebody who had in the past uh, been convicted of using marijuana? For the record, this is John Skidmore, the Director of the Criminal Division for the State of Alaska Department of Law through the Chair, Representative Gary. The answer is yes. If you look at the amendment itself, uh, let me make sure I have the right one in front of me. If you look at line 13 of the amendment, it uh, describes previously convicted of an offense, and then it lists the drug statutes, AS 1171-110 through 1171-060. 060 was the misconduct involving controlled substance in the sixth degree, which was the possession of marijuana. So it is included in that. Um, so the, the way it's drafted now, the answer is yes. Representative Garrett, thank you. Hey, Representative Guttenberg, and then Representative Grin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I guess this is a statement related to um, all the amendments that we're going to be redoing, and, and just the bill in general and the, the concept of, of all the sentencing reform. The punitive nature of what we've done over the years is, is, um, hasn't been as effective as we thought it has been. And now we have a commission that has been examining the effectiveness of certain things and, 
and making recommendations. I would rather be effective in my criminal justice sentencing issues than just being punitive. You know, we always can be mad at people for doing things. In this case, it's, it could be completely unrelated previous conviction for a drug offense that could not be related to anything that happened now. Or it could be, like um, Representative Pruitt um, uh, argument makes out. But at the end of the day, the, 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 uh, the, the commission's recommendations are, for me, a basis to starting off with. And being more, and being more punitive than, than effective is not some place I can go. I can be mad. I can um, uh, be aggra uh, aggravated about what people do. But the being effective on sentencing and probation and treatment and all those reforms is really what we're supposed to be doing and what I think we're supposed to be doing regardless of, of everything else. Criminal justice is complex and data-driven is more important than um, uh, uh, appeasing my anger. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative Guttenberg. Uh, Representative Grin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. I, um, I have to say Mr. Skidmore's answer to that question regarding um, marijuana use probably put me in the other way. I was, I was, um, I, I was looking towards a yes on this amendment knowing uh, I, I share the same concerns that, that Rep Pruitt does, um, especially here in, or especially in Anchorage. Um, but, but I think with that said, I think what 54 is doing of rolling back some of 91 is, is getting aggressive towards um, what I think the goal of what um, what this amendment is trying to do is, is to, um, and, uh, but that might be a little too far for me from Mr. Skidmore's answer, so just wanted to say that on record. Thanks. Thank you. Representative Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just as a comment to follow up on Representative Grin, um, it's a question, I guess, for Mr. Skidmore. Would the same discretion uh, apply in this situation of a prior use of marijuana now that the judge knows that marijuana is legal, would he have discretion uh, to take that into account um, and maybe be less likely to uh, make that marijuana usage uh, an issue um, because it's now legal as opposed to perhaps a, a different drug that is still illegal? Does that make sense? That's my question. Mr. Skidmore? Or maybe it's the courts. <clears throat> For the record, John Skidmore, the director of the criminal division. Through the chair, Representative Ortiz, uh, when the court has discretion of zero to five days, the court, from my 20 years of experience as a prosecutor, is going to look at a number of factors. Uh, when you talk about previous criminal convictions, they're going to look at the recency of the conviction. Is it 20 years ago? Is it last week? Is it wh Where does it fall? Um, I would also agree that I think you are correct that courts will look at, if it's for marijuana, how much weight do they want to give that? It all goes to discretion. Um, so I, I can't tell you how the court will exercise that discretion. I can only tell you that the court will have that discretion. I have certainly heard courts, uh, judges, indicate that because marijuana is now legal, that they have given less weight to marijuana convictions than they were previously. But I, I can't tell you precisely what a court would do. Okay, thank you. We've got a question from Representative Wilson. So, and it's just discussion. You know, if this was five days for sure, I would, I would be a no. What this does, though, is it gives more discretion, and I think that's what we're all looking at, for the courts to be able to say what are the other things that they could determine. Because right now we don't even allow them to use jail time. If, it, if this amendment doesn't go through, then they can only do suspended, you know. It, first, first we don't know all the cases. We could bring Mr. Skidmore up 20 times and give him 20 different scenarios, and we're still going to miss a whole lot of those. So I don't see where the harm is to give more discretion to the courts. I don't think they're going to give a lot of people five days because of it, but it gives them that opportunity to be able to do it because I'm telling you right now what we're doing is not working. That's why we're hearing the complaints in our own districts is because we're still doing this going around and around. And does $50 not sound like much? Well, it's not if only one person's doing it, but it's more than one. 
and and it's not and that one person is probably doing it more than once and just not getting caught at it to where at least in in my town my shop has just decided to stop calling because nothing's happening on it so this you know again if this was they're going everybody was going to get 5 days and we're going to throw everybody in the same pot I would not agree with that but that's not what this amendment does this amendment allows the opportunity for the judge to take all these things into account and then decide whether or not to still stay at zero, three, two, five, because there are some people who are still scared of jail. And even throwing them in there for one day and hearing all those doors closing might be enough for them to say, this is not a good feeling, I don't want to do it, versus sending them home and not even knowing or understanding what it is to truly be locked up. So I encourage everyone to vote yes on this. Thank you, Representative Wilson. Do we have any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, Representative Grin, do you maintain your objection? Uh, I maintain my objection, thanks. Okay, the objection is maintained. If the Secretary could please call the roll. Representative Tilton. Yes. Representative Wilson. Yes. Representative Guerra. No. Representative Grin. No. Representative Benberg. No. Representative Kawasaki. No. Representative Ortiz. Yes. Representative Pruitt. Yes. Representative Thompson. Yes. Representative Seaton. No. Representative Foster. No. Five yeas, six nays. And on a vote of five years to six nays, uh, amendment number six um, is not adopted. Okay, and we'll move on to amendment number seven, Representative Seaton, if I can have a motion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move amendment number seven, which is T.21. Yeah. We have an objection, Representative uh, Seaton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this amendment returns the maximum jail time for disorderly conduct to 24 hours, which is the current law. Disorderly conduct is most often used to remove someone from a difficult situation, such as a bar fight. Uh, SB 54 raised that to a maximum of five days. Someone held for five days on disorderly conduct, a Class B misdemeanor would begin to see life consequences, such as losing a job. Um, I have expressed uh, the opinion before that I'm worried about disproportionate sentencing. Uh, which we have seen in our judicial system and uh, the uh, information we have uh, seen come forward is that the, um, uh, the police need and troopers need some method to remove someone from uh, a situation but that doesn't require retention for a long period of time. Uh, and so uh, I think that we should move back to the 24 hours, which is what the uh, commission recommended. Thank you, Representative Seaton. Are there any questions? Representative Wilson. Again, this is just another one that says not more than five days. Gives more discretion. I can't imagine that if it was just a simple removal that somebody would want the courts would want them there four or five days. And I don't know how we make everybody fit into just 24 hours. Representative Guerra. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, disorderly conduct um, is the sort of catch-all crime when you haven't, when you find somebody who hasn't committed what most of us would consider a crime. Uh, Representative Seaton talked about a bar fight. That's an assault. You would get charged with assault. You could get charged with assault if the prosecutor decided to. Uh, assault 